From historic hotels whose halls are purportedly roamed by famous ghosts of the West, to native burial sites harboring the spirits of legendary interpreters who helped bridge seemingly uncrossable social chasms, are you ready to brave our picks for some of the most haunted places in Wyoming? Number 5. Sacagawea Cemetery Sacagawea Cemetery, which is located off of Cemetery Lane out of Fort Washaki on the Wind River Reservation in Wyoming, is a famous burying grounds that derives its name from the renowned Shoshone woman who acted as a guide, interpreter, and translator to Lewis and Clark. Historically, Sacagawea was born on land now contained within the state of Idaho, but was kidnapped at only 12 years of age by the Hidatsa and taken to land now contained within the state of North Dakota. There, a French fur trapper would literally purchase her to be his wife. In 1804, Sacagawea was just 16 and pregnant when Lewis and Clark made their camp near her village. Eventually, the daring captains would hire Sacagawea's husband as an interpreter, as he spoke Hidatsa in French, and Sacagawea would join them when they learned she spoke Shoshone in order to better communicate with others who spoke the dialect, and to better negotiate and trade. Additionally, having Sacagawea along with them had the added benefit of putting others at ease, as war parties never traveled with women or children. While some versions or histories paint Sacagawea as passing on in 1812 and being buried in South Dakota. Several oral traditions passed down by the Shoshone tell she lived on until 1884, after which she was actually buried near this very cemetery. While the whole truth might never be uncovered, many continue to visit this memorial each day in order to pay their respects to the legendary interpreter. Intriguingly, many nearing the cemetery report an initial feeling of unnatural coldness, followed by a warm, inviting presence that pulls them in towards the gated burial site that some claim is the spirit of Sacagawea herself. Incidentally, for over a century, countless visitors standing at grave sites have described observing the form of Sacagawea in the distance or feeling her energy around them, and on one account, a witness even claimed they felt and heard the wise woman whisper closely into their ear, right as they laid flowers in her honor. Number 4. The Historic Occidental Hotel the historic Occidental Hotel, which is located on North Main Street in Buffalo, Wyoming, is a prominent lodging placed just off the Bozeman Trail at the base of the Bighorn Mountains that's been visited by a range of famous names of the Old West, including Buffalo Bill Cody, Calamity Jane, Teddy Roosevelt, and many others. Historically, the Occidental would open its doors in 1880 and over time would welcome a number of expansions and reconstructions until it was considered in the tier of Grand Hotel. Through the 1930s and the Great Depression, sadly, the Occidental's charm would fade and owners would fight tooth and nail to keep its doors open. However, by the 1980s, the property would become run down and dilapidated and many would begin to fear it was destined for ruin. Fortunately, however, the site was purchased in 1997 by Don Dawson, who would launch a decade-long historic restoration and renovation project, during which time one David Stewart would assist in restoration in the North Wing and would establish the saloon's famous Occidental Jam Sessions. In 2008, David and Jackie Stewart would become managing partners in hotel operations, and in 2015, they would purchase the business outright. The Stewarts remain owners of the Occidental to this day, working year-round to ensure guests are provided with luxurious accommodations and a variety of delicious dining and drink options. Over its many years, the historic Occidental Hotel has been surrounded in a wealth of ghost stories and tales of the supernatural, with guests and staff reporting instances of doors opening and closing on their own, objects sighted moving about inexplicably, and spook lights viewed zipping around after dark on the upper floor. The ghost of Teddy Roosevelt himself has been encountered seemingly getting ready for a fishing trip long since passed in the upstairs library, and one more commonly encountered entity called Emily, who it's claimed was the daughter of a girl working the property during its time as a bordello, and whom it's said died of illness, is often spied roaming about, her slender form clad in a white dress and her long dark hair draped over her face. Number 3. The Historic Plains Hotel and Restaurant 
the historic Plains Hotel and Restaurant, which is located off of Central Avenue in Cheyenne, Wyoming, is a Western-themed lodging as famous for its luxurious atmosphere as it is infamous for its many purported hauntings. Historically, the Plains Hotel was constructed in 1910 and would open its doors the following year in 1911 with an elegant grand ball-style ceremony. The lodging would feature 100 guest rooms, three elevators, and some of the first in-room telephones across its five stories, and would grow quickly in popularity, attracting all manner of cattle barons, oil tycoons, and travelers on their way to Yellowstone and the Grand Tetons. The historic Plains Hotel and Restaurant remain open into the present, offering 130 fully restored guest rooms and suites, original artwork and photography courtesy of Wyoming artists, a slew of modern amenities, and in-house dining that's to die for. Over its years in operation, the Plains has been surrounded in an assortment of ghost stories and local legends, with both staff and guests telling of doors that open and close on their own, of instances of overnighters being choked with bedsheets seemingly manipulated by an invisible hands, and the constant feelings of being watched or of being followed by something unseen, something that has a habit of chuckling from darkened corners. Activity is said to get quite intense on the fourth floor, which is surrounded by two separate legends that intertwine with actual history. The first tells of a man who was pushed from a fourth floor window, and of frequent encounters with his manifestation around the aforementioned story. The second tells of a bride named Rosie, who was taken to the plains for her honeymoon, and whose groom while having drinks in the lobby, met a working girl whose fourth floor room he'd end up returning to. As it's told, Rosie watched this incident play out from a distance and followed her cheating spouse back to the young girl's room, where, in a rage, she broke in and shot both her husband and his mistress dead before returning to the honeymoon suite where she took her own life as well. The ghosts of Rosie, her husband, and his mistress have all been sighted at various times by both guests and employees, and staff nearing what was once the honeymoon suite have told of chilling crying intertwined with maniacal laughter that emanates from within. In. Rosie is most often sighted in a blue dress walking the hotel's corridors, her groom in his black dress coat and usually on the fourth floor or in the basement, and his mistress in a short red dress with white lace and usually on the second floor. Number 2. The Sheridan Inn the Sheridan Inn, which is located off of Broadway in Sheridan, Wyoming, is a historic lodging that was established under the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad as part of its development through the state. Historically designed in 1893 under architect Thomas R. Kimball out of Omaha, Nebraska, and inspired by various hotels he'd viewed while in Scotland, the Sheridan would open its doors boasting the first bathtubs and electric lighting in the region, and was considered the finest hotel between Chicago and San Francisco. Fran. From 1894 to 1896, hotel operations were managed under the legendary Buffalo Bill Cody, who played a large role through its design and construction and who actually held auditions for his renowned Wild West show right on the sweeping front porch. In 1964, the site was declared a national landmark. In 1966, it was honored on the National Register of Historic Places. And in 1967, the property was purchased by Nelt J. Doubleday Kings, who would issue a slew of renovations and who would eventually reopen the diner and saloon, alongside the ladies' parlor and the Wyoming room, all while working as a full-time artist. From 1990 to 2012, the inn would be operated under the Sheridan Heritage Center Incorporated, who would further renovate and restore the weathered expanse. And in 2013, the site was purchased by Bob and Dana Townsend in custom services out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. The Sheridan Inn remains open into the present, offering comfortable accommodations and unparalleled in-house dining options. Rather classically, the Sheridan Inn is rumored to be haunted by the spirits of past guests and employees who love the site and lives since past. And over the years, reports of disembodied footsteps from empty spaces, voices that emanate from vacant rooms, and phantom commotions through all hours of the night are all but common, and have even resulted in countless parties changing rooms or checking out entirely in order to get a good night's sleep elsewhere. One more famous presence on site is rumored to be that of Miss Kate Arnold, who worked for the hotel as a seamstress, desk clerk, housekeeper, hostess, babysitter, and more for more than 64 years from 1901 and onward. Miss Kate was well-loved by pretty much everyone around her, and her diligent spirit has been encountered tending tasks around the property with frequency, and has also been sighted gazing from windows at those passing by. 
across hotel grounds. Extreme cold spots are felt on hot days. Ghostly horse hoof steps have been heard about, and spook lights have been spied darting around after dark. Lastly, the manifestation of Buffalo Bill Cody himself has been known to make the occasional appearance, and seems to have a habit of materializing in reflective surfaces, such as in the glass of the large framed picture of himself. Number 1. The Fort Laramie National Historic Site the Fort Laramie National Historic Site, which is located off of Gray Rocks Road at the confluence of the Laramie and North Platte Rivers in Fort Laramie, Wyoming, marks a 19th century trading post that was integral in its hosting of several significant treaty negotiations with the Northern Plains Indian Nations. Historically, circa 1815 or 16, Jacques Laramy, who was accompanied by a group of fellow fur trappers, settled onto lands that would later accommodate Fort Laramie. Sadly, Jacques would venture out to trap one day either in 1819 or 1820 and was never heard from again, though his name would be carried on in the fort itself, in the nearby river, and other surrounding landmarks. The original Fort Laramie was constructed through the 1830s and catered to the fur trade. In 1849, the site was purchased under the U.S. Army, and though it was never attacked directly, the defense would play witness to countless conflicts with local tribes. Following the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869, the fort's importance was greatly diminished. In 1890, it was decommissioned entirely, and preceding its decommission, starting in April of the same year, the Army would begin auctioning off the expanse's abandoned buildings. In 1915, a monument commemorating the site's time as a military fort was established, and in 1938, the area was officially dedicated as the Fort Laramie National Monument, ensuring its ongoing preservation restoration, and education under the National Park Service. In a 1983 NPS document, a 536-acre historic district is recognized within its larger historic site, which contains the bulk of Laramie's original structures, ruins, and the like, as well as a separate area with a bridge. In total, the NPS identified 36 significant physical remains, including 13 standing structures, 11 ruins, and the foundations of various other former building sites allowing for the fort's history and events to be more accurately documented. More recently, in 2009, this weathered expanse would act as the focus of a digital preservation pilot project shared between the NPS, SciArc, and the University of Colorado, Denver. The Fort Laramie National Historic Site remains open into the present, offering educational materials and stops, touring options, hiking trails, a bookstore, scavenger hunts and other events, and much, much more. Through its lengthy existence, Fort Laramie has been surrounded in a multitude of purported hauntings and local legends, with those frequenting its bounds reporting disembodied footsteps and voices heard from vacant properties, doors sighted opening and closing on their own, and the constant feelings of being watched or of being followed by something unseen. One popular fable associates itself with the former bachelor's officer's quarters in the oldest military building in the state, Old Bedlam, which was constructed in 1849. Within Old Bedlam, many have encountered the apparition of what's believed to be a former cavalry officer, who's been known to rush suddenly and unexpectedly past living parties, ordering them to be quiet before disappearing around nearby corners or into thin air. Built in 1874, the Cavalry Barracks building once held hundreds of soldiers in squad bays on its second floor, and to date, and usually early in the morning, many have reported hearing the sounds of heavy boot steps overhead, right around the same time the soldiers would have been answering the rive. Along Deer Creek, the entity of a headless man has been sighted throwing rocks into the waters and has been known to chase those who approach him. At Bovee Draw, at around midnight, the ghost of a Civil War soldier has been sighted acting erratically and has been known to attack those who get too close. And at the detention dam, the spirit of a man brandishing a sword covered in blood has been sighted staring over the waters, also usually at or around midnight. Built in 1870, the old captain's quarters is said to hold a number of presences, the most famous of which has been dubbed George. And within, many have described doors that slam shut spontaneously, the sounds of someone shuffling around heard emanating from empty rooms, and bright lights observed by those passing by after dark. Even 
even though there's no electricity within. Also reported around Laramie and not confined to one area in particular are spook lights that zip about, extreme cold spots felt on hot days, and encounters with a range of full-bodied apparitions, including with that of a mysterious young man in a raincoat who always appears to be talking to someone unseen, and with a tired-looking surgeon in a blood-spattered uniform. A final popular legend tells that when the fort was still utilized in the fur trade, the agent in charge had his daughter out to visit. An avid equestrian and total rebel, this daughter was made to promise never to leave the fort without an escort. One night, however, while the agent was away, his daughter would slip the post on a huge black horse, and while several eventually spotted her and attempted to catch up or stop her, she managed to ride off onto the distant prairie and was never heard from again. Now it's told the spirit of this young woman likes to make an appearance every seven years or so, riding in circles around the fort in an emerald dress, and since the onset of her manifestation, she's earned herself a new moniker, that of Laramie's legendary Lady in Green. Taking its intriguing history and impressive range of associated urban legends and purports of encounters with the paranormal into account, the Fort Laramie National Historic Site was an easy choice as this list's most haunted place in Wyoming. Thanks for joining us for this list of some of the most haunted places in Wyoming. If you enjoyed hearing our histories and ghost stories, subscribe to our channel, like this upload, and share us with anyone you feel could use a good scare. Pleasant dreams.